right, it's time for a makeup declutter. It's been a while since I have done a makeup declutter. I also said I wasn't gonna buy makeup. That didn't actually end up happening. And now I have a bunch to go through. So let's do it. So here we have all my makeup. A lot of this makeup I did end up purchasing myself. Some of it was sent to me, some of it was replacements, and others were even in collaboration with some brands that I worked with. It's still a lot better than it used to be, so I'm very happy about that, but um, there's definitely some things here that straight up I am not using anymore. It's probably gone bad, and I'll show you kind of what I wanna keep, what I'm going to give away, because some of these things have not even been opened. Let's get into it. Okay, so first let's get into base. I actually don't have a lot here, but some of these things um, I probably will need to declutter just because they have very likely gone bad. I'll just start with the newest addition in my collection. So this is the Elia Super Serum Skin Tint SPF 40. I really, really like this foundation. So it is very watery as you can see. It, it goes on really smoothly. This is a beautiful no makeup makeup sort of serum foundation. I would say it's a very light to medium coverage if you layer with foundation. And the, the other thing I would say about this is I really wouldn't use it as my sole SPF and then I would go ahead and layer this on for some added protection. And um, if you wanna do like a little SPF touch up during the day, then I think this is great for that. And yeah, I really, really like it for those more natural makeup days and in the summer. These were some extra shades that Elia sent to me. It's just a backup of the ST4 Formosa. It expires in 2023, so I'm gonna hold on to this one. And then this is a darker shade in ST5 Bomb Bomb. So this one I think I'm actually gonna donate because it hasn't been opened. And the Formosa is a pretty good shade for me. Next is the Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. This one was gifted to me in PR, but I have used this foundation before for many years. It is a really, really beautiful foundation. Um, this one, I think it's probably, when does it expire? Oh my God, that is the smallest thing I've ever seen. I'm pretty sure it says 12 months. This has been open for longer than 12 months and I haven't really worn any foundation throughout the pandemic. I've still been going to work. I have to wear masks all day. So this one I will probably declutter just because it's gone bad, but I actually would uh, purchase this with my own money and would repurchase it again if I was looking for a foundation. It does make the skin look really nice. Um, I would say this is a great foundation if you're on the market for one. Okay, last in complexion is the Elia True Skin Serum Foundation. This was sent to me. Uh, to be honest, I have never used this. So I don't know what it's like. Um, let me see what kind of reviews it gets on Sephora. One second. Looking at this on Sephora.com, it gets four out of five stars. So I think this super skin tint does get better reviews. Great serum coverage, leaky packaging, obsessed. Too dewy, very light coverage, runny. Easy to apply serum foundation, just doesn't last. I don't know. I'm kind of like, I know I like this one and it's not getting too many great reviews. So I think I'll probably just donate it. And really quickly, I just wanted to share my favorite sunscreens with you guys right now. My favorite face sunscreen. The first one is the Isntree Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel. It's SPF 50. PA++++. Plus, 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 plus. Um, this is really, really nice. I learned about it on TikTok. It goes on, it's really creamy and hydrating. My skin looks really dewy. It doesn't oxidize. It doesn't sting or burn. It's just like a really nice SPF. And then for mineral sunscreens, I'm still using my SkinCeuticals Physical Fusion UV Defense SPF 50. This is the tinted one. Um, and I'm pretty sure this is the only color that 
SkinCeuticals has when it comes to the tint. So definitely not that great um, if you have a deeper or even quite or even a very fair um, complexion. So these are kind of what I go in with if I'm ever gonna use this Elia skin tint. I always go in with like real deal sunscreen first because I really just don't think that you'll actually apply enough um, of this and this might get too cakey if you apply like the recommended amount of, su of sunscreen. Okay, so my concealer pile has definitely expanded since we all decluttered my makeup last. Right away, I know I'm gonna declutter this Becca under eye brightening concealer in light to medium. It is just a bit too light for me. So it's meant to be a corrector um, where it should help brighten and sort of cancel out any darkness. I find this to be very sticky. It tends to easily crease and I'm pretty sure Becca is now discontinued. I heard they went out of business so I don't actually know if you can get this anymore. Um, let me know in the comments. Um, and yeah, I just didn't, didn't love this. This is probably the newest concealer to me. This is the Elia True Skin Serum Concealer. So I did work with Elia and they did send this to me. This is in the shade SC5 Arrowroot and I love this concealer. It has easily, quickly become my holy grail concealer. Besides these two, I really like these but this has just a really nice serum-y formula. It has some really decent coverage. I find that it's buildable. Um, it blends seamlessly into the skin, and I really like the little doe foot applicator that it has. It gives me the coverage I need. It gives me the brightness I need. I really, really like this concealer, and this is just a backup. So I'm gonna hold on to these. This Hourglass Concealer, this is something that I wanted to try. I think I purchased it on the Sephora sale. I feel like concealer is something that I'm always just like searching for. This is just a bit of a darker color that I got to um, touch up any zits, things like that. Silk Vanish Concealer, I think. Um, I'm a big Hourglass fan in general. I find all their stuff's really creamy, really nice. Um, and this is just like a little bit of a different color, so. If I'm like a little bit more tan in the summer or I just need a bit of color correction, I like to go for this one, but I still tend to like this formula better. The It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye is an oldie, but a goodie. I have repurchased this concealer probably three times now. I really like it. It's nice and thick. Um, I find if you have maybe more mature skin, you'll really like this because to me it doesn't cake into my eyes or anything like that. If you want full coverage, this is the one to go and this tube lasts forever. And this, I don't know, TikTok made me buy it. I had a gift card to Shoppers Drug Mart. Shoppers Drug Mart sells Chanel, so I decided to try it. It's the Le Corrector de Chanel in the color rose. I can see the hype around this product that you know, it's sort of circulating on TikTok. It's really silky, really nice formula. Um, I've definitely been enjoying it and I've just sort of, I just sort of always go in and like layer all my concealers. Concealers are really my jam when it comes to, um, you know, correcting and brightening my complexion. Concealers, yeah, I mean, we're gonna keep all of these. Okay, getting into brow products and eyeliner, I actually don't have a lot. This is everything and it is definitely more brow heavy than eyeliner or anything like that. Um, I'll just start with this liquid liner. I have no idea who it's by. It says Zuzu Lux in Raven. I think I did liquid liner like once in the past year. Um, if I plan to do it again, I am going to just buy a new one because this is super old um, and I probably needed to throw it out like a lot sooner than today. So in terms of eyeliners, I only have two and they are both in brown. One is this Burt's Bees, I don't even know because all of the labeling is marked off. Um, to be honest, I actually really like this one. It had a really nice sort of like smudge to it and whenever I tend to um, get liners, I always just end up going for brown. Although I feel like this one is a little bit warm for me. I find I tend to look better and feel better in a darker, cooler tone. So this Revlon one, Revlon Colorstay Eyeliner in black brown. Um, that's what I use all the time. I've been using this for the past year. 
Um, and it's fine. I just do like a little bit of a wing liner flick every once in a while or line my top waterline to sort of give depth to my lashes. Um, so I'll just keep this one. I'm going to get rid of this one. And for me, the name of the game is Brows. I tell this story every time I plucked my eyebrows when I was like 12. They never grew back and I've had to draw them in ever since. I did get microblading um, and I bled everywhere. And also the lady said that I wasn't a great candidate for microblading because my skin is quite oily so the pigment doesn't tend to stay. If I were to do it again, I was recommended to get micro shading, which I guess is like a little bit less of the individual hair-like strokes and it's more of like that Instagram brow, like that ombre brow. I don't know. Um, I might look into brow lamination just to see what kind of feathering I can get and I might look into tinting my brows. Um, but for now, we draw them in. This is what's left of my current eyebrow pencils. These are the Oakenfort O-Brow. I'm pretty sure this is discontinued. The little spoolies have broken off and I still have a ton of product and I really couldn't tell you if it's available anymore so what I have when these run out is my trusty Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz this is in the color medium brown this has never done me dirty and I probably will only ever use the Anastasia ever again so this is going to be waiting with bated breath once I finally use these up this is the precisely my brow pencil from Benefit in the color 4.5. It's a bit too warm for me. I like how tiny and thin this pencil is, um, but I still like the brow is better. And sometimes I will go ahead and mix all of these three together and then either go in with the benefit. I don't even know what this is called in 3.5 or I will use the 24 hour brow setter if I want more of like a soap brow look. And I really, really like both these products. I still think this is a little too warm for me, but I would definitely repurchase the brow setter. This is actually awesome. Um, this, I prefer Glossier Boy Brow a little bit more, but I do have as a backup this Elia Brow Gel in medium brown. I have not tried this. I've heard good things and it has a bit of a different looking brush. So if you have big, bushy Brooke Shields brows, then you're in luck. For me, I'm not really sure how this is gonna work, but we'll try it. So I'm still gonna keep these. Okay, here we have, um, I guess I'm gonna call this like palettes slash bronzer section. Um, this you guys have seen in pretty much all of my declutters. This is the Marc Jacobs Omega Bronze Powder. If I'm looking for something powder finish and um, especially like a contour finish, I really, really like this color. It is in Tantastic. I think this used to be limited edition and now um, they carry it all the time. But I mean, if you needed to get just like one bronzer and you wanted a powder one, this is a really great one. I like the giant big mirror here, nice for travel. And um, yeah, barely made a dent, so I'm gonna keep it. Next is the Charlotte Tilbury Filmstar Bronze and Glow Face Palette. I tend to use this highlighter quite a lot. I really like this one. And then the bronzer, I really actually prefer to use as a contour. If you wanna talk differences though, this Marc Jacobs one is definitely a lot more matte than th this one. I feel like it has just a very slight little bit of shimmer. Both I really like and I use them on a decently regular basis in terms of powders so I think I'm gonna keep them. They're gonna they're gonna stick around. In terms of face palettes I only have this one. This is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Volume 4 Palette. And really, I typically only use the blush here, these two sort of powders as setting powders, and very occasionally I will use the highlighter. I don't really use this plum blush, although in the fall I think it would look really nice. Um, honestly, I could really just declutter all of this and just use this and be really happy. But uh, yeah, I don't think I'm there yet when it comes to my makeup minimalism, but I still like it. Okay, and finally, these are two cream bronzer products that I use all the time. This is my second purchase of the Hourglass 
Illum Sheer Color Trio in Sunset. I love all of these three shades equally. The bronzer I really like if I'm looking for just like a really creamy natural look. It blends absolutely seamlessly. This blush is a really nice coral shade just to give you like a really nice flush and then this highlighter it's super natural i find it blends really easily hourglass i don't know their cream products are just like they're probably my favorite i will always go for them i absolutely love this palette and then this i wanted to declutter probably from them my last couple of makeup declutters it is the soleil tan bronze universal from chanel and you can see on my hand um, it looks very orange, but um, and you would think it, it would go to like Oompa Loompa status really quickly, but this on your skin when you blend it in with a brush, it looks just really nice and soft and doesn't translate very orange, at least on my face, which I'm surprised about um, when I do wear it as a bronzer. I was going to declutter it, then I didn't want to, then I started using it, and now I really like it. I'm going to hold on to it, I guess, even longer. In terms of face powder, I only have one. This is something that I bought last year, um, mostly just for YouTube videos because I didn't want to look too, too shiny all the time on camera. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Complexion Perfecting Micro Powder. This powder, I would say, really lives up to the hype. I only ever really use this to prevent mascara transfer, so I'll powder under my eyes, on my eyelids, and a little bit in the T-zone, and it just makes your pores go away and it does what I need it to do for YouTube and being on camera so I'm gonna keep this too so in terms of cream blushes I thought I had more but I guess this is it but these two I wanted to highlight because they are a brand that I had never heard of prior to last year they are a brand from Montreal called Minori it's just like a really cool um, clean beauty brand that's very rooted in minimalism very inspired by minimalism they have a very sort of edited curated um, selection of products but it's great for a range of skin tones um, not sponsored but i just really like the story behind this brand uh, the people behind the brand and the actual product itself is quite lovely so this first one is their cream blush in scarlet and it really sort of reminds me of the rms cream blushes the lip to cheek um, products and this is quite similar I would say you can use it on your lips and on your cheeks so here's the dusty rose which is a very true dusty rose color and the scarlet which is like a corally orangey red both really nice on the cheeks on the lips even on the eyelids if you want to go for a monochromatic look I find that these last really well um, and they blend just really seamlessly and I really really like these and so you guys know this video is not sponsored but I did tell the people at Minori that I was going to mention them in today's video so they were kind enough to offer you guys a discount so I will leave everything linked in the description for you I feel like this is like a cult product it's the Ely uh, what do you call it multi-stick and this is in the shade at last i find i tend to really lean towards those dusty rose kind of shades um and i find this formula really really interesting so you're supposed to be able to use this on your lips and on your cheeks this product you know i really like it it's really effortless everything goes on really easy but i find it the formula to be a little bit dry so where your skin like doesn't necessarily look as like dewy as i think i would necessarily want it versus the minori which i find is a little bit more of a dewy a creamier like consistency compared to the stick but I mean, this is really pigmented. It goes on really well. If you want just like a unitasker in terms of your blush and your lipstick, then I mean, I think the Elia is a great choice. I like the packaging. It's really compact. If anything, I think my sister would really like it. Um, we definitely play hand-me-downs when it comes to makeup. So I think I might give this to her, to be honest. Okay, this is what we've got for eyeshadow. I'll start with the Elia palette because it is the newest to me. Um, this is an absolutely stunning palette. Everything here is really pigmented, goes on really beautifully. Um, like, look at that shimmer, it's so good. 
and it has a lot of really nice colors. If you have like green eyes or blue eyes, I think this would look absolutely stunning. Yeah, this is the Warm Nude eyeshadow palette. For me, warm tones are not really my jam. It makes me look really tired and sallow, and I think I'm definitely more of a cool toned gal when it comes to my eyeshadows. My sister has green eyes, so I think she will really like this, and she is such an eyeshadow girl, so I'm gonna pass this on to her. And then these two um, have been going strong in my makeup collection for a really long time, but straight up, I feel like they have pretty much almost dried out. These are the Tom Ford cream and powder eye color duos. They feel almost like Play-Doh, like they're very bouncy. Um, and the colors, you know, they're still, they're still going, they're still there. But yeah, I don't know, I'm pretty sure that these have like long since expired. I've had these for like five years. Doesn't smell bad though, and still blends. I don't know, would you guys keep it? For sanitary reasons, I probably shouldn't. say that this is my lip gloss collection. I definitely prefer a glossy lip over a matte lip. I think at the beginning of my YouTube channel, I was definitely like a lipstick wearer. I would wear lipstick quite often. This is also pre-panini, you know, pre-mask. So wearing lipstick was kind of like a thing that I liked to do. Not so much these days. Lately, I am more inclined to go for a gloss, something really nice and natural looking. These two are a brand new ish purchase to me. Um, I bought these in the past couple of months and it's definitely a TikTok made me buy it scenario. So these are the Dior Lip Glow Oil. I got one in Rosewood and the other in, I think this is Mahogany. Um, both of these are gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous on the lips. They just make your lips look like glass. They make it look really plump. Um, I would say that it, the formula, to be honest, is a bit sticky, but I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's worth it. It looks really good. I find my hair doesn't get stuck in it, which is good. And it has like a little bit of a peppermint scent. So be mindful of that if you're not into scents. Sticky, but not in a bad way, if that makes sense. So definitely keeping these. If you're looking for a more pigmented lip gloss than the Elia one, I really do recommend it. This is the Elia Balmy Gloss Tinted Lip Oil. I really like this too. It, it lasts decently long. I don't use it too, too often ever since I got the Dior. Um, but if I'm feeling like I want a little bit more of something on my lips, a little bit more color, then it's definitely, then this one is actually really nice. So here we have my lipstick collection. Basically, if you split it in half, this is all the new things that I have in my collection and these have been going strong for years. Um, in terms of decluttering, looking at them, to be honest, I really like all of these. This lipstick I'm going to keep forever because it is engraved with my dog's name, Chika, and it's actually an awesome, awesome red shade like a really nice cherry red. It goes on really creamy. The YSL lipsticks are really, really nice, so I'm gonna keep that. And then um, I'd say my other favorite is this NARS lipstick in red square. It's a very nice matte sort of fire engine red. I really like the packaging. It's super easy to travel with. So I'm gonna keep this one, but I'm actually going to declutter this MAC one that I bought a couple years ago and just never really ended up wearing. And it's very similar to the NARS, maybe running a little bit more on the orange side. This is MAC Morange. Um, but I find with my skin tone, again, I really do look better um, in the more blue toned reds. This is MAC Ruby Woo. I've had it for years and years and years. It looks um, pretty dried up, but I mean, it's going on okay. When are you supposed to get rid of lipsticks? I really don't know. And then this one I haven't really worn probably since like 2019. It is Fenty Freckle Fiesta. Um, her matte lipsticks are so good. They go on really creamy. This one's still super creamy, but to be honest, I don't really wear it that often. You can see it's kind of like a terracotta color. I really like it, but again, not really wearing it, so I'm gonna get rid of it. I really like Tom Ford makeup. It is very expensive, but if you have the budget for it, I would say it's worth it. This is the Ultra Shine Lip Color in 706. I don't know. 
It's this like pinky dusty rose color. It has like a really nice glossy finish. So if I'm filming, I'm most often actually wearing this with this Dior lip glow as a top coat to keep things looking a little more plump and hydrated. So that's kind of like my duo these days. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk lipstick because for a little while I decided to go on this mission to try to discover like what my neutral shade was, but I find the undertone in my lips um, is very brown. So when I put shades like this on my lips with a brownish undertone, they start to look very dark and very 90s. This was like a fantasy self makeup situation. Everybody loves pillow talk. Everybody talks about pillow talk. Everyone says how flattering it is. And for me, not so much. So I'm going to declutter it. And then finally, these three Elia lipsticks, they were sent to me. And this is a beautiful cherry red in the shade True Red of the Colorblock lipsticks. And here we've got Rosewood and Amber Light, which I'm not even gonna swatch because I haven't swatched it and I can already tell it's gonna be way too brown for me. So I feel like even Rosewood, I think, is a bit too brown. I don't really know what I'm thinking with that guy. So I'm gonna get rid of these two just because I know that they're not gonna look flattering on me. I don't know, I'm like a red lipstick girl or I'm like a pinky gloss type. Okay, and then finally with eyes, um, this is what I've got going right now for mascara. Um, the one I have on the go actively right now is this MAC In Extreme Dimension 3D Black Lash Mascara. It's got a really interesting wand. I think it's meant for more separating the lashes um, and lengthening, and I find it really does do that. For me, I find it really does tend to flake into my eyes quite a lot, um, but I do like the color payoff and how sort of separated and like va va voom it makes my lashes look. To be honest, I don't think I would buy this again. This one was gifted to me and it took me a really long time to get around to using it. And now that I am, it's just not anything that I think I would ever buy. When this one is finished, I am going straight back to my holy grail, the Elia Limitless Lash Mascara. This is my favorite, favorite mascara of all time. First of all, it's just got that really nice classic Elia packaging. I think it meant, it, I think for me, it really separates and lifts my lashes while still keeping them super natural. And my favorite thing is that it does not flake into my eyes. That wand also has a little bit of a sort of curl to it to help curl your lashes. I find it holds my lashes really well. Now that I open this, I have to start using it, but this is like my favorite, 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 hands down, favorite mascara. I've bought it multiple times myself, for sure, worth the money, it's my favorite. And then my eyelash curler, it's not going anywhere, it's the Shiseido eyelash curler. I don't know, it works well, I like it. Okay, so this is everything that I am either giving away or throwing out because it's gone bad, or I just didn't like it and it's not working for me, whether it be in terms of color, texture, consistency, frequency, um, all of these things I am going to part with because I have plenty of other makeup to play with that's gonna last me pretty much until it expires if it hasn't expired already. So I'm really happy with this being edited down as it is. Um, I have you know, enough variety if I want. Everything that I need, everything that I like to wear is here. So I'm really happy with the size of this collection right now. So that's all of my makeup for today, you guys. Let me know if you liked this declutter, if you wanna see more. If you guys were interested in any of the makeup, then I will leave everything that I can linked down below for you guys. Let me know if you've been decluttering any of your makeup yourself lately. What have you kept and what have you decided to let go of? And how good does it feel? I love an edited, curated makeup collection, if I do say so myself. If you guys like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. It's a great way you can help support my channel. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. See you in the next one, guys. Bye.